All right, welcome to a video by Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. This is a uh, request from one of my members. He was asking for help on how to send ITSI tickets into a ticketing system. And I've thrown down two examples here, ServiceNow. Wow, and I just said ITSI. Um, let's get that fixed. I meant Avanti. Um, Again, there are lots of ticketing systems out there. The basic concept, I, I wish I had a lot better explanations here, but the basic concept is you're gonna need to uh, determine the system. Does that ticketing system allow API access? And then do a little investigation in Splunk, and I mean, uh, on Splunk Base and other uh, Google searches and see if there is an app that'll do it for you. If not, you're stuck building a, a, a custom API or if there is no API, I, you're, you're kind of out of luck. Um, I wish there was a silver bullet. You download one app, you configure it, and just magically it works. But anytime you try to integrate one uh, company's product with another company's product, you're going to have some issues. But we are going to go over the how to uh, get the, that system. We're going to go through the docs, and we're going to test the alerts. But before we do that, I just want to give a real quick shout out to my members and talk about the perks of being a member of the community. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to this channel. Additionally, we offer the opportunity to become a member of this channel, and that membership has the perks of being able to see videos as soon as they're created, which could be up to a month before they're released publicly. Additionally, if you want to supercharge your lame training, we offer training that it will never be open to the public and that covers administration training. It covers how to hunt and do analytic work. We have apps and other things that we've done that really streamline the process, and we offer those to our membership. Your membership helps this channel grow and allows us to get the technology and the abilities to be able to give better demonstrations and make this technology more available to everyone. So please like, subscribe, and if you're interested, I would appreciate it if you joined and became a member of this uh, channel. All right, so now that we will go talk about determining t the uh, ticketing system, we're gonna, I've picked two. I'm gonna be honest, I've worked with both of these. Um, just be aware, one of them, works out of the box the other one used to work but it doesn't work but it's the it's the concept you're going to be following i can't tell you exactly how to do it for every system but i'm going to show you a process and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't service now as far as i'm aware still works avanti has changed their api calls and it does not work anymore or at least that's what we've uh we've been told when we talk to their uh, customer support group anyway uh, but the, there's still an app out there and you still configure it and you still follow the documentation, et cetera. Uh, I do all of this from my house. So guess what? I have not bought an expensive ticketing system. And so I can't demo it. I'm just going to act like I'm hooking it up and you'll get all the steps. And I'm hoping that will help guide you through it. So let's go. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to good old the internet and I'm going to go to Splunk base. And the first thing I'll do is I just typed in ServiceNow. I actually, I also did some searches on the internet and it told me that the Splunk add-on for ServiceNow is useful. I also, I looked around, there are a bunch of other options. First thing I look at is, is it a, a Splunk supported add-on? If you have customer support that you have with Splunk, and you download a Splunk supported app, you can actually put a ticket in if it's not working quite right. If you come and grab a developed add-on or a not supported, you're on your own to get those to work. That doesn't mean they're not good, they're not bad, but the first thing I look for is I like to go with the Splunk supported add-on. That way in case it fails, I can always put a ticket in and say, hey, can you help me with this? And they might even actually change their app or add-on or whatever the case may be. I've had good, they're good to work with. But anyway, if I go click this app, I can see some things it's going to tell me about the app. I can read this. Splunk allows software administrators to use custom commands. It says here, the add-on provides workflow actions that allow users to link directly to events. Um, knowledge articles add-on provides inputs. Um, I have to say, this is one of the reasons I went to Google Foo, is when I read this, it didn't give me the information. That, it didn't give me a warm fuzzy that this would actually export to ServiceNow. But we can click on here. we got details, and there's the Splunk Docs. So I'm just going to – I'm not going to open up another link. I've got Splunk Docs here. 
I come in here and it's going to tell me, oh, look, create an incident, an event from a custom alert action, update an app. Yeah, okay. So this does have everything I want. Um, so breezing through it, yep, this add-on is what I'm going to need to be able to make Splunk be able to send to ServiceNow. So I download the app. I hit the download button. I come into my Splunk instance and I go apps, manage apps and I'm going to install it. I've already installed it because I want to test it, but I go grab that download file, put it in, upload, and I'm done. Now what you'll notice is if I go into settings, searches, reports, and alerts, it has added a new feature to it that may or may not be apparent. I'm gonna go look for, I want alerts. You don't get this very easily from safe searches. Sometimes you do, but the general rule, just keep it in the alerts. We'll go all apps, make an alert. All right, you know what? I, I'm going to go look at one of my, I'm going to just do it. Sorry, I should have just gone and done this. I'm going to make a, my own custom alert. And so we're going to do make results, eval foo equals bar table time foo i now have an event i save as an alert youtube service now ticket and all i really want to show is that you come down here to your add actions down at the bottom i now have service now event integration and service now incident integration and so if i click them Here's why I put my ServiceNow account, the node, the type, the resource, severity, additional information, identifiers, description, and custom fields. And this becomes an alert. So when, the, when at, this action occurs, it sends it in as an event. That's what the app does. It gives you that custom action and handles the, uh, the API calls. Well, let's go back to the documentation. I'm going to come in here. There's the overview. You can read the overview. I went to configuration, configure ServiceNow to integrate with the Splunk platform. First thing I can, you come read through this and it talks about how it can have alert generated scripts, search commands, blah, blah, blah. And ultimately it tells you if you want to perform push integration with ServiceNow, so I want to be able to push my stuff out there and other things, apply the integration application. It'll talk you through how to do that. This is all ServiceNow. I can't show it to you because I don't have a ServiceNow account. But it talks about built, grabbing an app from the uh, ServiceNow app store and how to configure it, then do an update set. And then when you're done, you can set it up to do OAuth authentication or web authentication and you're good to go. Then you jump down to the next step, set up Splunk add-on for the service now. And you can set up basic auth using Splunk web. It'll walk you through it. You go to manage apps, launch app on the account. Um, you go add, add your service now account. There's your information, click add. Or you can use OAuth and other settings that you may want to use on your Splunk web configurations. So you just have to, uh, it's its a little bit of reading, follow the documentation. Some is better than others. This definitely the Splunk documentation I find to be the best. We're gonna go do an Avanti one and it is not quite as well documented, but it's still okay. It's shorter, but it leaves a little, it, sometimes verbose is better, sometimes shorter is better. You choose. Anyway, um, if you want me, I guess I can go here, manage apps, click the launch app. So if I do that, I'm going to go search, manage apps, and we go service now. Oh, let's do service. I'm going to get IT service and a few others, but service now. Add on for service now. Launch app. That part I can control. And you're going to see, what does it say? After you go to Manage Apps, Launch Apps, go to the Service Account tab, Service Account. I'm going to guess I'm going to hit Add, Add, and then add in the Service Account now. So if I come back, Add, it's going to ask me for that information, and that information probably is being generated when you did the Service Now app on ServiceNow.
and you put that information in, that's going to get the auto authentication going and so that you can do your alerts. All right, we're going to pause the service now. I've given kind of an overview of how you integrate ServiceNow tickets in. We're going to talk about doing Avanti. Now, again, if you're using Avanti, I'm going to give you, if you make yours, if your Avanti works, awesome. The Avanti I have at work doesn't integrate, um, and that's just too bad. Um, that's really quite unfortunate, actually. But we have Avanti, and there's actually two Avanti apps. And you'll notice they're both developer supported. So you got an Avanti service manager add-on for Splunk and an Avanti service manager app for Splunk. The app allows you, what its concept is, is you bring logs in, you'll get a summary data. So it's that app, it's that visual interface that a person might want to see, saying how many tickets were ingested, et cetera. This manager add-on is exactly like the ServiceNow add-on. It actually downloads that API connection. You'll you'll configure it, and then it'll give you the ability to send tickets to Avanti. So in this case, I'm just going to go here first. How do I know that? Well, because I read the docs. So I come in here, summary. It talks about an add-on, supported versions. So you you can work up to here. Um, these are the latest versions. You come to details. Here's an overview. You read it. it talks about the requirements. The TA has been developed and tested. For, and you want to make sure you add that in. And then you want to go in and set your configurations and configuration workflow. Again, this is for pull, uh, pulling Avanti data from Avanti. So I could see how many tickets were created and get their, uh, their statuses. And then you just follow through. As a general rule, this all worked. The problem is now the API has changed and our current version doesn't work. But this is how you did it. You followed through the guidance. And it, it even has in there, what do you do if there's some troubleshooting? And so you can follow that. Um, and so I'm going to go install this one uh, because I'll show you what it does if I download. Actually, walk through the download of this one. Yep, save. And now I'll come in here and we will manage apps. Install from file. Choose file. There's my Avanti. Upload. <laughs> but generally, it's just getting these add-ons in, and then I'm going to go write a query back to my make results, eval foo equals bar, table foo, time, run it, save as an alert, hopefully I have an Avanti here. There you go. Create an incident in Avanti Service Management. And so I would follow that and follow its steps, and that would send the ticket in. All right. Now a real key. Let's go back to my roadmap. I just told you the ticketing system, read, follow the documents. I I wanted to give you the, prem, the premise, you have this new alert action. You may need to, now you want to do some querying. All right, now you've got to determine what you want to send. In theory, when you have an episode, for some reason, my episodes aren't showing up. Don't know why. Um, might be the fact that my license is expired. Um, anyway, you you actually can have stat actions, and you can take actions, and you can push them there. Uh, the, the big key is, do you want to do it from a ticketing system? Other things you can do. I told you you can do any searches, so here's some valuable searches. There's the ITSI summary index, and you can look at service uh, service health, and you get information from there, where you've got your, if you look at it, you got your KPI, the the service, the the change. There's values in there, and you can write an alert to send it off when it exceeds. The one I kind of like, uh, as a general, I like this ITSI notables 
So the source type is ITSI notable dash event. That's why it's kind of funny that I don't actually have the alert showing up because here are my notables that are supposed to be in there. Um, but anyway, so if I go look at them, I can see that I have a sales event and that what caused it, that the it's dipped in the last five minutes severity. And so here are the fields that I want to be able to send and then I can save this as an alert and say run this every five minutes. Uh, and you need to be careful. You don't want to over flood your ITSI. You don't want ITSI to over flood your ticketing system. But when there are certain alerts that you feel need to be escalated, you write that report, grab the queries, and set as an alert and make that action to send it off to fant uh, to your uh, whether it be Avanti, whether it be ServiceNow, whatever the case may be, whatever that system is, you choose what's going to be sent there, whether it be based off risk, whether it be based off cert whatever the case may be, and then you can just send it off. Um, I do apologize. I wish I could have given this directly with saying, all right, here's a ServiceNow instance and make it all work. And then you could go in and see the tickets going back and forth. But I just don't have that capability from here. Um, I'm continuing to grow my infrastructure, but it comes, it's coming slowly uh, and virtualization and all that licensing stuff going on. But Hopefully I gave you enough information here to be able to get the general gist. And if there's any little tiny hiccups, feel free to write to me on Discord, comment in the chat, whatever the case may be, I'm here to help. Uh, but anyway, so now that you've got it, we should be able to d determine your ticket system, read the docs, test the alerts. That's the general principle. It's going to be that for every one of them. Uh, thank you for joining the channel. I hope this helps you move from being a... Uh, uh, lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja and again I want to give a shout out to all of those that are part of my community they really help this channel grow and they help provide me the ability to gain some of these resources so I can continue to improve the videos that I'm making and I just want to give a shout out to those who have joined the channel thanks so much to them